Lovers quarrel. It's a long sustained quarrel. What's going on, world? Hey, everybody. It's your guy, TJ, Mr. New Cool. And it's your girl, Danny, your virtually vivacious vaquita. And a vaquita is yeah, a type of porpoise. Because you knew I was going to ask. I know you were because. What is a vaquita? A vaquita is a type of porpoise found in um, off the coast of California. What is a porpoise? It's in the, the dolphin whale family. Okay. You stay in the camera. Why not just you call gotta it? stay in frame. Well, I gotta also be with the mic. I'm sorry. Make it work. You told me to move. You're right. You said, You're right. I, you said You're you right. I'm not making no more excuses. I'm making no, no more excuses. You got saying. it. You okay. got it. So, welcome to another episode of Lovers Quarrel. Um, as always, I'm your girl, Danny. And I'm your guy, TJ. Um, and this is a very special episode. We know we say that a lot as well, <laughs> all the time. But this is a unique thing because as you're hearing us record this episode for our regular recording, you are also hearing us do the recording live on Instagram. So it's going to be a little unique as far as how the flow of the latter half of the show goes. But um, for those of you who are watching it happen in real time, thanks. And, and hopefully you'll run it back again on Friday. <laughs> So, how are you, my good sir? I'm doing amazing. How are you, Danny? I'm, you know, I'm doing all right for what it's worth. I can't complain. Um, the weather is nice, even though we can't do shit. Um, and, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm enjoying being able to go outside and hang out and everything else. I mean, on my deck, but you know what I mean. No, I definitely understand. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, my wife had a nice surprise for me. Uh, mm -hmm. She had my parents come uh, visit us. So it was the first time I've seen my parents in two months. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they've been social distancing. We've been social Quarantine. distancing, quarantining. And, you know, it was just uh, a great gesture that she did. So thank you. You're welcome. I don't care what they say about you. It's not true. Nobody says bad shit about me. They say for you. They say a lot of things, but I'm just saying now because of this, I'll, sorry. I will so make sure. Have, so this, I will make sure that when very, they say something with this very unique episode that we have, we have people in real time who are going to tell you that they don't talk shit about me because they agree with me all the time. Oh, but those people don't talk shit about you. you I'm just saying, you, but them over there, they talk hella shit. And so, what do you say? Do you defend me? Before I didn't, but now, but now I can. You gave me something to to defend upon. Who raised you? Laura Byerson, mm. Terrence Byerson Sr. Who raised you? See, somebody said chill on Danny right there in the comments. That's crazy. Because everybody, first of all, everybody knows no. that you are the problem child in this relationship. That's crazy. Why, why, how am I the problem child? See, Megan said they don't. Megan's your line sister. It doesn't count. They said, why are you such a hater? That's my own cousin. That's, That's crazy. Because, because if they know you, they know that this is true. See, Taylor said, don't blame it on them. It's all on you. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for the reinforcements because this nigga is delusional. Why gotta be? Us. I'm not delusional. I'm being honest, open, and truthful. All I'm saying is that because of your kind gesture, now I know that you got my back 100. percent Like, so it took 16 years. I mean, listen. Married you, had your baby. Like, yeah, it took that. It took that. It took. It, it took. It took, a, it took a pandemic and you getting my parents to come down here to change everything. Thank you. It, it do be your own people. Like, how? Who, I don't. I don't. I don't support it. At least I'm being open and honest. You but anyway. No, you're full of shit. That's what you're doing. Excuse me once I have to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's such Sorry. a cute little sneeze. Thank you. Well, we would be remiss if we did not actually get into the, the flow of the show. Yes. So we are going to, as always, start with our elevator talk. So Wait, now, before you do that, if this is your first time listening yes. to us, welcome. welcome. If it's your second time listening to us, welcome, welcome back. back. If it's your third or more time, as I like to call you, you a lover. You're my lover. And I like to say you're family. Yeah, that's because she's, yeah. I, I said what I said. You said what you said. You got it. Thank but go you. ahead. We can go on this elevator. Are you going up or down, love? I'm doing a little bit of both. So I'm going to go down, but I'm going to end going up. So you guys who are I'm definitely show, going down, so... You, ugh, so maybe you should start because then I'll end on a higher note. So we can do that. All right. So TJ is going to go first. You get to hear my elevator speech and talk in real time. <clears throat> going down. Oh, that, that sounds perfect. <laughs> that was like really good. Um, I'm going to say I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, 
everything that's going on with, you know, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Arbery, mm-hmm. is it Ar- Arbery or Arbery, Arbery and Breonna, Breonna Taylor. Taylor. Um, you know, it's this is a, a tough time. And it's like even during a pandemic, African-Americans can't can't be safe. Catch a break. Like, you know, during something that is affecting the, everybody, we're still targeted. Like we're, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and even with, I think her last name was Cooper. Amy, oh, is it Amy, Amy Cooper? Cooper, a.k.a. Karen. Like, no, we're going to call her Amy Cooper because that's her name. No, but it's pronounced Karen. No, no, no. You, 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 we, the world has to know who it is. Amy Cooper pronounced Karen Height 9-11. No, but whatever. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's, it's, it's frustrating that even during a pandemic, even during something that's affecting everybody, we're still profiled. And I'm just, I'm tired of, of being tired. I'm tired of like mm-hmm. reading the news and seeing it and seeing that they're killing us. And it's just acceptable. <laughs> Sorry. That was Danny's fault. So. That was. I was just trying to fix the camera. Okay. Continue. Continue. You were on a roll. All right. Say what you got to say. No, I'm, I'm just saying that it's, 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 it's getting, it's becoming more frustrating, right? Like, you know. It's we live in a world weapon. Amy Karen Cooper, that's a middle name. Amy, Amy Karen Cooper. Mm-hmm. It's it, to me, it's such a problem that even during this time, we can't be safe. And it's just like, when is it enough? What more do you want from us? I really so like I I a hundred percent agree with you because um, I really feel like and it actually my elevator talk is going to touch on that. Um, and actually, are you finished? Because then I can kind of segue right Yes, in. my love. Okay. You, you can take over. All right. So I'm going to continue going down before I go up. Um, so I had a moment um, yesterday, actually. Um, so as most of y'all know who are listeners to the show, and if you haven't, I'm, and we're glad to have you. Um, so TJ and I recently moved into our forever home. And it's, you know, a nice suburban area in Maryland. And... Um, it's in Baltimore County. And I've been recently, of course, during this quarantine, a lot of people, a lot of us have been uh, probably trying to fight off the quarantine 15, right? And um, so I've been really working on like trying to go out for walks in the morning before my, you know, I get started on, um, get started at work and before Tatum wakes up. Um, and before TJ gets up. Yeah, before TJ gets up. Basically just... You know, before it's the been, world is up. Yes, and it's been really, really therapeutic and helpful, right? Um, no, we're not in Arundel Mills. We're still in Baltimore County. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, though, you know, I'm walking around this neighborhood, and I mean, this is like peak suburban. Like every street is a cul-de-sac, all that jazz, right? And I've been walking consistently for the last two, three weeks. You know, the same couple of routes around the neighborhood, right? And, um, the other day, yesterday when I was walking, it was, you know, not even maybe seven o'clock in the morning and I'm walking down one particular street in my neighborhood. And this, this particular day, the, um, the neighbor's dog was out. So one neighbor's dog, you know, of course barks, it is what it is. I think, I don't think anything of it. And then I get to the end of the street and there's another house that I know also has dogs and this particular day, those dogs start park barking. And so as I turn around um, and like kind of circle the cul-de-sac and come back in, um, I hear somebody go, yes. So I like tense up a little bit. And to give you a little perspective, I have on sunglasses because it was really bright that day. And my hair was like on day three of my twist out. So it was more just like kind of like a really curly fro. So you looked black. Um, yes. Um, and mm-hmm. I immediately was like, good morning. And, um, then I heard the person say, oh, it's just somebody walking to like his wife in the house. And like, I had, a, like, I didn't get like emotional, but like I was texting my group thread with, um, my sister and her friends. And I was saying like, y'all, like I, I think I might have just got profiled, like, or a little, you know. Um, I was like, but and basically, though, my knee jerk reaction was like, be friendly, Danny. Say good morning, Danny. Don't like, don't, you know, say something, right? Um, to to like be disarming, Danny. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
it wasn't even like and the thing too like they gave me like pause was like you you didn't even say like good morning back you didn't say like you know hey and like my thing is like i know for a fact like i've walked these streets for like two three weeks in a row like these same four or five cul-de-sacs trying to get my steps in or whatever so like but i guess because you know we can wear our hair kind of differently every time they maybe they didn't know who i was um and i like literally the conversation went to with my my uh, friends and this thread I was in is that like we have to be so vigilant just to fucking exercise just to exercise like I'm trying to be healthy I'm trying to not have heart disease and all this stuff like that like you know and and trying to do right and I have to be focused on my exercise but also it's about like I have to keep my head on a swivel because and as a black woman not only because I have to be mindful of people looking at me and because of my race no matter how light I might be um also as a woman as a black woman and I'm I'm sitting here like you know it's frustrating and we're talking in our thread and we're talking about how like one part you know this thread is in my group text it's like people who, it's women who are in um North Carolina, who, I mean, sorry, South Carolina, who are in Connecticut, who are in New York, and we're like, yeah, girl, I gotta wear my headphones with on with the in with the volume on low. Um, I gotta, you know, I, I ride my bike as a as opposed to walking because I want to get, get my cardio in and out. I want to go faster so I'm not lingering. Um, you know, and the thing is, like, you know, we gotta worry about somebody racially profiling, but we also gotta worry about being snatched up in a van. You know, how I make sure I text TJ or I, I wake him up and say, hey, I'm going for a walk. Um, some of y'all have seen me posting when I'm trying to like do these attempts at jogging um, on, on, on my walks and everything like that, trying to build up my stamina. And, um, and I'm sitting here thinking like, it's so frustrating because I can't even focus because I'm always like, I can't even just be relaxed and it's supposed to be like this like moment of zen in the morning and I can't even have that because I'm always having to be on guard and because somebody's looking to wonder who I am and what's my purpose there and and to make and to make a point very clear too is that I've noticed even since we've moved in and we've only been here about two three months is that it is a diverse neighborhood we've seen a lot of people of color here but yet you see a person of color and you're wondering why they're there so it was very, very frustrating. Um, and I see one person um, commented about like what James, the James Baldwin quote, which is to be, yeah, to um, to be black in America and to be conscious is to be in a rage all the time and like and high, conscious all the time. High, no, it's the other way. It's supposed to be the other way around. Oh, okay, sorry. so well, I'm just, I was the, reading what he said. I know. I'm just I shout out to my guy. Yes, that's one of our loyal listeners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Davin. Yeah, so. Saying that all to say, y'all, and I'm going to wrap it up because you know I can talk. Oh, we know you can talk. Um, a is, lot. A lot. It's just, it's just frustrating as how I, I echo TJ sentiments. And I would be lying if I didn't say, you know, I get why people are turning the fuck up. Because you, you're talking about we are in the middle of a pandemic. It's, it honestly is kind of one of the great equalizers of coronavirus could come for anybody don't matter how any old you race are, what your race is, any how wealth much, how much you yes your social economic status nothing matters and you're still worried about us yeah. and you still worried about me trying to walk and, and, and keep this listen we're still getting murdered and 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 that's the the trouble that like that's what makes me so frustrated because it's just like to hear you kind of talk about that that is what it's like to be an african-american male every day right my parents taught me like you got to get home at the end of the night. So, you know what I mean? Be polite to the police officers. Be polite when people ask you questions, you know? We can't overreact because we're black. So when we do overreact, it's kind of like this big black man, especially for me, like mm -hmm. this big black man was raising his voice and now I become a threat. And that's, it's frustrating, but it's also a scary sight. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have a daughter. I always wanted a son, but I'm, I'm I'm fearful of having a son because if he's going to be anything like me, he's going to be big at a young age, and they're going to automatically assume that this person that, that that my son is a troublemaker or, or or is causing harm, and it's just like that's the worst feeling. It's the worst feeling to 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 have to police yourself to make sure 
that you have a, a fair opportunity, that you have an opportunity just to survive. And it's so like frustrating. Like, yeah. That's and, really why I'm, I'm where I'm at. Where and I'm at. I also agree to this point where someone said in here, future SG Will Pearl said, um, politeness means nothing if you if they if someone wants to harm you. That's because, correct. Because that's the thing. Like I'm, I I defaulted to being polite, but that doesn't mean anything. And to your point, I know that you have said that in the past about like you are you you would love to have a son, but sometimes you're grateful for having a daughter. But in all honesty, and this was a conversation that we were having this weekend with mm-hmm. our, was about like black women. Quite honestly, we're just as susceptible and just as vulnerable as black men in the sense that we see, we just don't hear about those women who are subjected to police brutality Agreed. or to uh, to violence by, uh, um, because of white supremacy. And to add a level to that, we are not only we are susceptible to violence in the sense that we could be shot in our homes or, or, or killed in jail because we got arrested because of a fucking traffic violation. But also we have to, we have the extra thing of the likelihood of sexual assault, which is why I said that when I'm walking, yeah. I'm having to like be vigilant because of my, me being black, but I also have to be vigilant because of me being a woman and thinking about, yo, is somebody going to try and like grab me out of a bush or, you know, or trying to run up on me on a van or whatever else, because I'm, a, I'm also a woman. So there's that, we have that intersectionality too. And sexual assault does come from the police because there was that police officer who did was, who targeted, who was, who targeted, was targeting women of color. Black women because no one would yeah. believe them. So. But saying that all to say, I fully understand why people turn the fuck up and it, I'm at a point in my life, in my almost 33 years on this planet where I'm like, you know what? Turn the fuck up. Almost 33? Almost 30. I will be 33 in July. Woo! Yes. Okay. Things come from the chat um, that blew yours at T. We are... We are reacting to the data. Okay. Um, Vimroy said, give me that big breath. <laughs> on a lighter note. Vimroy is a hater, but. You say you're not that big? Yeah. You know, t- we, we had weight loss surgery, y'all, so we small and now see my neck. I got, if I didn't have on the lover's coral hoodie, you could see my collarbone, y'all. Anyway. But, but one thing I wanted to, was the thing, Corona, you were saying COVID-19 was the great like, equalizer, mm-hmm. but it's still affecting us and because we're we're seventy five percent of the freaking essential popula- essential worker so, population. Is anything equalizer in this sense? No. Because oh, that's a fact. There's that effect. Like it's still a thing. Yeah. It's it's really frustrating, and it's like I'm not even gonna hold you when coronavirus was in like January, early February, when we were starting, when it was becoming more and more of a topic of conversation in the United States. And we were, um, and remember there was like that little blip of time where they were like, black people aren't catching it or nobody in Africa has it. And I was like, you know what? I can't even be mad at it. I was like, maybe this is God saying, hey, good looking out. Like, you know, I, I, I had my fingers crossed a tiny bit that maybe people who had like, you know, some melanin would be, you know, spared. But here yet again, we're at the, you know, we're at the receiving end of the, this horrific, you know, virus. Um, But I don't want to stay negative, stay negative, but um, I'm also seeing somebody saying the LGBTQ plus community is not being made a priority right now outside of their own agenda. Um, I think that that also is a really important topic that we we do need to address and and, and talk more about um, because you know the kind of like the more intersections that you live at as a person, black woman, LGBTQ, poor, what you know, whatever, all the whatever intersection you live at, you are you're like you you fall that much further down the totem pole, and it's. It's it's infuriating and it's frustrating, but y'all like thank y'all for even just like commenting and talking to us because I saw some great comments. I saw my line sister was talking about yes, why everybody needs a license to carry. Of course. Um, I love leave my line sister alone. You I love got her, it. even when she makes me crazy. Um, hey Megan. <laughs> but I'm gonna you know try to shift the mood so we can kind of keep it light because I know y'all have your drinks in front of y'all and we don't. Well, my baby cousin just joined, so she better not have no drinks in front of her. Um, and, uh, just kind of finish on a better note. 
Um, Cause you're going up now, right? Going up. Ooh, look at that voice. I had to do it well for the for the people. Um, honestly, y'all, this is super cool and exciting, and I'm really excited to, with this new way that we're trying to engage with y'all. Um, you know, we're recording this as we are rec- doing an Instagram live, and it's you know. It's it's interesting, and I know that like if I'm being transparent, and also it's the tequila kicking in just a little bit. Um, you're saying you're a lightweight. I have my stomach is this big. I'm just asking. Mind your. Business. I'm just asking if you're a lightweight. That's Mind it. I mean, business. listen, it's okay to be a lightweight. Mind your. You got it. My fault. Can we just have like a collective thread of telling TJ to mind his business? Because maybe if he hears it from other people, that's not going to change me from stop. That's not going to change you from talking. <laughs> so. um... I just love it because, you know, TJ and I just, we do these episodes every week and just for the sake of like, we always talk about it. We do it just because we want, we use it as like, uh, it's sometimes it's cathartic to just spend time with each other um, and then to talk to our friends and people who don't know us personally about what's just going on in our world. And the fact that even one of you is even interested in what we have to say and think that we are like... Hey, I got reinforcement. My line brother just came in. E. Ross, what's good? First of all... Let's get it. Eric, whatever. Don't anyway. do that. Don't be disrespectful. I didn't disrespect your line, sister. I let them be great. Hi, Eric. Oh, another line brother came in. Okay. Strong side is in here. Them niggas been sick of you, too. So They probably have been. Exactly. But listen, that's not the case. But ultimately, I'm just excited, y'all. This is really cool. Like, the fact that we have anybody just let's t- tuning in to, to listen to mm, us. My guy Tip in here. To listen to us. That's what I'm talking about. Um. Oh, it's so like, yeah, you so, Zoe's in here. Okay. We out here. So, it's just been really, really, it's just really dope. And we are humbled and excited and happy. And it's like, you know... Listen, I agree, I agree we can't we can't get this many people even even this little you know this number that we have is that's going up steadily. We couldn't even all be in a room together at this time. So the fact that we're all together is just dope. And I'm I'm humbled and I'm honored and I'm excited. Can I jump in on you? And I'm glad that y'all are enjoying it. Can, I, and let us know if y'all are enjoying it. Y'all can give us like a little Can I agree with you? If you like what you're hearing, give us a um the boxing glove fist or like a boxing glove or a heart or something like that okay a boxing you know, glove or a heart because lovers quarrel I get that I, I know I know where you were going oh our drinks are right here yeah don't get it twisted mommy even though it's not spelled how I spell mommy but it's okay but okay you said mommy cause it's my mommy glass oh uh, but I spell it with an I-E oh well since we're doing that listen oh yeah but if you're trying to get Anything, custom glasses, custom, glasses, custom, custom stuff shirts all that she's in here right now her name is Charmonique she is dope. She is one of our friends. Her husband helped us get this house. Shout out to the Powell. Exactly. They, they got a whole little conglomerate exactly, over there. Exactly, right? So. I had to look at you to make sure I didn't mess up the words. I'm okay. saying it. Feel so, me? y'all, if y'all really, uh, you know, if you need anything, if you're in the Baltimore area, she probably will ship it to you as well. Go to her page, Charmonique. Um, and Woo! just. That was her Mother's Day gift. That's all she got. Anyway. Yeah, I said it. No, I got my bracelets because I posted them. Nigga. That came after the fact. Oh, what you got on the day of. And you haven't even wore those bracelets. Okay. You know what? That's not going to make it. Where am I going? Let's not. Where am I going? Listen. I don't have my ring on right now. I, I put on earrings for y'all. You're being disrespectful. Okay. Okay. So, now with that being said, what did you want to add on? You said you wanted to chime in. Oh, no. I, I, I agree with you. You know, I was I was thinking one track mind, but that's why I married you, right? Mm-hmm. I married you because I knew that I would be able to get what I needed. The stuff that I lack, you pick up in. So, you brought, you brought that up, and, and, and I think it's a dope idea. And, and again, I thank the MPHC for even thinking about us and, and giving us this opportunity. So, thank you. Yes, thank you. Appreciate I'm, it, Davin. So, I'm just typing in um, Charmonique's Instagram. So they said to make it pin. To, to I don't pin it. I'm pin just going. I'm just going to tap her name. How do you pin it though? Um, we about to find out. Charmin. Oh wait, I don't want to misspell her name because it's right there. Come on. What kind oh, of te- I forgot. Okay. What kind of teacher are you? For, mind your business. Wait up! What did you just do? I didn't know you could do that. You didn't know I can type? No, I didn't know you can like slide it by touching the space button. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. We're going to post her in here. Charmonique, I apologize if I did not spell your name right because I'm absolutely feeling a little bit um, intoxicated. Yeah, a little bit. Can we pin it? 
Hey, yes. there it goes. Boom. Okay, there she is. Did I spell it right? Okay, I spelled. Tell me if I spelled it right. Okay. Are you that drunk that you can't tell? Yeah, I know I can't, but thank you, Megan. Me- thank you, Megan. Megan. Okay, so Megan is my line sister. She's my back. I'm a nine. She's a ten. Um, Ebby Boo, my my five is in here. And I'm letting you know right now, they will squat up and they will beat TJ up for me. So please. Well, but, listen, we respect women to the best of our abilities. So. So we're gonna, but we're gonna move on. All right. So um, now it is time for our relationship tip of the week. Um, would you like me to go first? Or would you like to go first? I'm gonna start it off. All right. This is a first, right? I know, right? Go ahead, sir. I'd be typically like letting you go, just so I can see like how, like how, how much ether am I going to give you? But I'll start it off. So my wife kind of just, you know, touched on it. Like, where is she going? Well, my tip is just because we're quarantining doesn't mean you still can't be romantic. Mm. So just because we're in the house doesn't mean that we can't still have fun. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I've seen people turn their homes into movie theaters. I've seen just a whole bunch of things that uh, of of how creative people can be. And it made me say, like. Just because we're home doesn't mean we still can't be creative. Doesn't mean we can't still celebrate each other. Doesn't mean we can't still do fun things. Um, and you know, I think that we just need to utilize that 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 stuff to be able to mm-hmm. to be able to enjoy what we do have. So you know, mm-hmm. you won't go to the movies. Shit, you can rent movies that's in the theaters right now to your TV. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's. The skies is the limit, and I would say this is a time that you can still be creative. You know, your wife loves, or your girlfriend, or someone that you're interested in your likes partner. likes a, a certain restaurant. Look up the recipe, make that shit. Like we could do so much more, and 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 that's what the quarantine is really showing us. Like we can do anything that we want to do. We just got to put the work in to do it. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. I think that was an excellent, dope tip. That was an excellent tip. Um, Come back. You know, it's. Oh, are you you you're making a comeback? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying like come back with something oh, fire. Okay. Hopefully. First of all. Hopefully. If I'm not anything, go, go, go I'm smart. You know what? You, you were just praising me, and I stopped you. I apologize. Exactly. Go ahead. Continue block, praising me, Queen. Blocking your blessings. Continue praising me, as always. Oh, hi, Karan. Hi, Marissa. I see y'all talking to each other. <laughs> um. So my relationship tip is a well. I'll say this. It's a little bit directed to the parents that are present. But if you are interested or you are in a relationship and you plan on, you know, you want children at some point. um, My relationship tip of the week um, is that within reason, emphasis on within reason, is argue and make up in front of your kids. Hmm. So... The reason, thank you, shout, thank you to you. That's crazy. Um, and the reason why I say that, you know, argue and make up in front of your kids is because it's really important that your children see what conflict looks like, but also what conflict resolution looks like. Um, and knowing that. You can disagree. You can even disagree to the point that you kind of get a little elevated. You get a little heated, right? And but that you come back around and that you can come become come past it and get past it, excuse me, and that you can move on from it and that you can still be affectionate. Um, So, you know, TJ and I, clearly you've heard us us on episodes of this show. If you haven't, run it, run the tapes because you've seen me and him go. The show is called Lover's Quarrel. Like, enough said, right? I'm the lover and she'd be quarreling. Um, Yes, as cancers, we can do that. I might cry because I'm pissed. But as a cancer, I can still argue and then make up. (laughs) Um, But she never (laughs) won. So, um, but I think it's really important because sometimes we think that like, I don't want kids. To see, I don't. I think it's you know not good to see them arg- see people fighting. But if it's not domestic violence, if it's not a, emotionally abusive or anything like that, if it's like legitimately a disagreement, then you know. And I'm not saying be like hold that thought. Let's go bring Tatum in and let's go argue in front of her. But if it starts to happen and you know kind of the pro the, the series of events start to ha- it unfold in front of her, within reason. We're going to have it. We're going to go through this process. But she's also going to see us 
talk it out. She's also going to see us make up and hug and kiss. And she's also going to have to hear us to come talk to her and say, mommy, sorry. And daddy, sorry that we got loud in front of you because she's, she's gotten upset before and she normally she's yelled at TJ, but um, but ultimately, though, I you feel... You had to put that out there. I mean, it's, what is what it is. Uh, but I think what it is... But ultimately, I think it's important because it's modeling what conflict and conflict resolution is. And, you know, when we give our relationship tips, we're all, we're t- we talk about all types of ships, is what I like to say. Relationships like mm-hmm. romantic, friendships, family, the kinships, and your relationships with your children. Um, and, you know, I just... I think that it's important that that happens because then that way they're not blindsided. That way they think like, well, my parents never argued. So in my relationships, I should never argue. Or my parents always argue and I never saw them make up. So that means I should always go hard in the paint and that's it. You know what I mean? So again, my personal opinion, um, and again, always within reason, make sure that it's like a healthy disagreement. You know, we're not going for the jugular, but... I think that that's important. Um, but that is my relationship tip of the week. I agree with you. Um, I'm pretty sure that was, uh, what's the name? Inspired by me, so. I mean, you're welcome. anyone you're- who knows you knows that you argue. I don't be trying and to anyone argue who knows you well also knows that you're often wrong. So, with that being said, we're going <sighs> to skip on along because that way we need to get to some questions, right? Because we, we want to respect your time and we want to respect this live, right? So... Um, TJ and I started doing a Black History Month fact because during Black History Month, but we decided to just keep the party going. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that right now. So my Black History Month fact for the week is um, for when our episode, which this episode will drop, which is on May 29th, this Friday. And on May 29th, 19, excuse me, 1851, Sojourner Truth gave her famous Ain't I a Woman speech at the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. Shout out to Sojourner. That is a very good one. Thank you. Lately, I've been naming, calling our dog London Harriet because she's very interested in running away. She has been running away. Okay. A lot. All right. And I blame, you know, I blame you. Give you a quote. Because you don't give, be paying attention to her. Give you a black history. You don't be showing London the love give that she needs. This is going to time out in 30 more minutes. Anyway. So need to, like, yeah. So, for my black history fact... Carmelo Anthony was born. That's a that's a simple one, you know. Quick layup. Shout out to Carmelo. He's back in the league now. Hey, speaking of <laughs> NBA, is supposed to be coming back July in July. I need that to happen. God knows what every man needs, and 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 for some women, some women need that too. Um, and then my other fact: Thomas Bradley was elected mayor of Los Angeles and served an unprecedented five terms in the office. Mm-hmm. So. And at that time, LA was a predominantly white city, so it was saying a lot. Oh, snap. What? Lakers Nation. Yeah, LA. Yes. Because we're right. definitely getting the chip this year and next year and the year after that. Listen, we got to do it for Kobe, so. Listen, Kobe died, and you know what the world was like, man, fuck it. Um, Pretty much. The world stopped because Kobe passed away. Honestly, coronavirus happened because Kobe passed away. If he didn't pass away, we wouldn't be in corona. Just my thoughts. That's my uh, conspiracy theorist for this episode. You know what? I'd rather that conspiracy theory than you talking about some 5G bullshit. And look, you, how do you want to talk about just men like a basketball coach when Marissa is in here? That's just six foot. I nine. just like, said, I just said, I just said women too. She Marissa is, is his she six, is, exactly. Has six, his six foot D. Exactly. Megan, Dwight Howard puts creases in his jeans. <laughs> so we're not going to support And her. Dwight's coming off the bench, Megan. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. He's a bench player at best right now. And he's been that way for some time, but... Anyway. But Marissa can be on my team anytime. Aw, I love Marissa. Love you, boo. Um, all right, y'all. So, in lieu of having a love note or a love letter, whatever you want to call our listener letter... You're just going to skip my, my whole... Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. That's crazy. It's now time for our word of the week. I apologize. This is where TJ tries to enlighten himself with a $10 word. Why are you And then tries that? to stump me... Um, by having me spell it. So we're gonna do that briefly. Why do you get ten dollar words? Why can't I get like a hundred dollar words? I don't know. Somebody called you um trash, and Marissa said I used to kill him that bird. We definitely did. So that's EJ. I, I, oh hi EJ. EJ is always gonna haze me, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm always 
online with him. D- TJ definitely trash. All he does is hack everybody. Megan, stop it. <laughs> you can't even get on the court. Anywho, All right. continue. All right, so my word of the week is... Stay in frame. No, I got to I gotta let Karen speak. We don't fuck with Karen. Ephemeral. We can call it Rebecca. Rebecca. Ephemeral. So my word of the week is ephemeral. Ephemeral, something that is fleeting or short-lived is ephemeral. Like a fly that lives for one day or text messages fitting, flitting. I don't know. What is flitting? Fleeting? Is, so it, is it two E's or an I? F-L-I-T-T-I-N-G. Flitting. Like, I've never heard of it. Like flit. Like, okay. Thank you, Tia. Thank From you. cell phone to cell phone. Flitting. Okay. <laughs> shit, shit. Spell flitting. Oh, I, already, I already spelled flitting. I know how to spell flitting. I, I, I got you. All right. Ephemeral? Ephemeral. Okay, because no my, pressure. It's my margarita has definitely kicked in. Excuses a bit. are tools of the week and the confident, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. That's your line name. <laughs> so, um, ephemeral. E. E. P. H. Ephem. E. M. Ephem. Or E. R. A. L. Say it again. E. P. H. E M E F M E R A L. You got it. Ba, 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 ba! Motherfuck me, no motherfuck you. That's because she seen my phone. When I, I definitely did not. First of all, I, I dropped it down and she was watching. I'm a woman of. I, first of all, you have a privacy screen on your phone, so yeah, pri- privacy is to the left or the right. It was right in front of you, but it's good. You got it, love. You're a hater. You You're a hater. Come on. You're a hater. Come on, bro. Let's go. Good all shit. Right. Now that I bust TJ's ass with that SAT word, um, what was, what was that face though? That was my face. Come on, come on Webstar. Yes, that was my other alias. Um, so it is now time instead of us doing our love note, our love letter, what we like to call it, where we would read a listener letter. We um are going to hold it real quick. EJ, she went to school in Harlem, so. Just give you a heads but up. But no, I got my elementary education in Queens. He said, you said, no, we don't care about what you did in elementary. It's all about what you did in right high school and all. We need to respect people's time. All right. Is you we're going to get to our question and answer portion. So um, we did solicit my um, Lover's Quarrels page and the NPHC page, did solicit questions from followers um, prior to our live right now. And then also, we will absolutely take. And field questions from you guys in the comments. So please um, throw those in there. And we'll give you our best shot with what we have to say about those things. So this is now where we're going to throw it to Tia. And she can cue us up with some Q&A. Alright, ready. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So, first question. Is it easier to date a fellow Greek? Hmm. I think it depends on the mindset. Mm. So I think that if you are two individuals who happen to be Greek, but y'all are able to separate, then it's easy. Um, I do think that sometimes when becoming Greek, people fall into Greekdom and they like fall in. define them. Yeah. And then they, you know. So they feel like they got to be out all the time or they got to do stuff or, you know, my line sisters, it doesn't really happen to the line brothers as much. But, you know, a lot of times the sorority, they'd be like, my line sister. Oh, I haven't seen my line sister and stuff like that. So I believe you. Um, I think that dating a fellow Greek, I, honestly, it just comes down to the person. Sometimes it works because then that way, if, like, is if you're it, both isn't active. Isn't what I just said? Go ahead. No, but no. I'm going to say it better. <laughs> Um, so I, because I if you, you are, if you're active and you understand like chapter meetings and, um, you know, community service and fundraising events and all that thing, all those things, um, if there's a level of understanding there, then it might be easier because you're like, oh yeah, of course. Like when TJ's like, I got chapter meeting on Saturday and I'm like, I got chapter meeting next Saturday. We already know, um, that it, it, it goes without saying that like, this is a priority for me. I got to make time for it and we will deal. Um, but I do also agree that like if you um, if you have someone who um, I'm trying to think if you have someone who is like they let their letters define them and they're like, 
they, it's all that's literally like the foundation of how they base their personality that can be proved to be difficult mm -hmm. and that can be, whether or not your partner is or is not greek because you're letting that your letters define who you are but that's and, the reason why i said maturity right because who i was at 21 is different than who i am at 30 yeah and and who people are in in general right because once you realize that okay i have to work towards making sure this relationship works so you know, maybe I won't go to this party or I may, may or I may not do this. Like once you're able to understand that Greek life is a part of our lives, but it's not our life, then I feel like it's easier. But I feel like sometimes with, with people who aren't sure and, and don't realize like it's separate entities and it should be everything in your life should be separate. Right. Mm -hmm. your, your work life should be separate. Your, 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 the things you do for fun is separate. Relationships separate. So everything should go into different pies or, or areas. Got it. And I like I like the statement here which says like I make sh I just it makes it doesn't really make a difference if you have an understanding partner. And I do think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, so from the chat we got two no's, but it looks like the Yes, yeah, it's easy to be saying they get it. Okay. Um, all right, next question. Okay. <laughs> now, particularly during this time, we're quarantined together. Mm. How are you dealing with your annoying habits? How are you dealing with your partner's annoying habits? Mm. Yes. <sighs> so, what I'll say is, is that I am, I mean, I'm, anyone who knows me and TJ knows that I'm, I have a deep well of patience. Do you? Yes. Um, I can't tell. And um, I think that Patience is going to definitely be um, key during this time. But as far as dealing with it too, like if I'm being quite honest, TJ and I talk about uh, have talked about this a lot. Which like, had we not moved right before the pandemic and the quarantine started, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading the comment. Um, and we were in our old house, which was significantly smaller. We probably would be beefing a lot more but because we kind of have like respective corners that we can kind of go to and then we can kind of meet in the middle especially when it's like because we're working and we're parenting and we're teaching and we're doing all these things from the same space in the same spaces i'm the better teacher too um that's the side that, that no one believes you so um i, haven't been a better I think teacher. that's really important it's like it's really like however best you can like to carve out time or space for yourself is how you can kind of survive quarantine, but it definitely this is definitely showing what people are made of and whether or not couples can thrive and survive through it. I I, I definitely agree with Danny, and you know, um, I think part part of it is also our communication, which mm -hmm. again I, I took a long time to be able to have that open communication to kind of talk about our likes, dislikes, and being able to grow from it. I also think that has that has helped, but definitely having more space. Because we're not on top of each other. It's not like we're in the same house. Like we could be in two different places, but be in the same house, but have that much space and not have to worry about being on top of each other. Sometimes I'm loud. Everyone tells me I'm loud. All the time. Shh. All the First of all, no. That's love. Whatever. Come on. Let me, so let me... I, had to, I had to like tell TJ like, sir, you really don't need to take every work call on speakerphone it's obnoxious and you have and i really feel like that was like a, a communication piece that we had to say where i'm like my oh, nigga like go into another room or <laughs> <laughs> shut up sorry paul shut up so go into another room and um or or take the phone off a of speaker use those airport pods you bought like do something because it is obnoxious. So like that's like I'm big on just like yo. You but that's that's also part. That's it. also part of my like multitasking. Like if I'm on speakerphone, I can still do other things no, because of it. There's no such thing as multitasking. Charmini, yes, I'm loud. I, I'm learning that I'm Everybody loud. Everybody in here who has met. TJ, okay, well, I'm, anybody in here who has listened to the show. I'm, I'm TJ is loud. I'm learning TJ. All right, that's what the point. How thing long is. does it take it? You've been with you your whole life. I'm still learning myself. Huh? Say it again. Oh, we got like probably 15 minutes. Probably 15 or 16 minutes. Yeah. Quick, quick disclaimer. Listen, if if it dies, we're going to come right back. Yeah, because we, right we only get an hour. So if, if 
If we go past the hour, we're coming right back on. Okay. All right, go ahead. Hang with us, please, especially if you're entertaining. (laughs) All right, go ahead, Tia. That was my alley-oop. Thank you, TJ, for picking that up. I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down. (laughs) That's my thing. Let's see. What age am I? Basically. Hey, address the audience. All right. Because if it's like a 30-year-old, yeah. Do let's what just, you want. You grown. Let's cross this thing out. Let's make sure this thing is compatible. Be safe. If you are, and looking at the people in this chat right now, we are all in our late 20s, 30s. If sex on the first date is what you and your partner want, if y'all are consenting adults, yeah, we got de- shit. We got to destigmatize that. Be like, safe and... Do you, boo? So, I think everybody's on the same page. Exactly. All right. The chat is in full support of that, I see. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. Let's see. 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 let us I think all of it, right? I think we're in an unprecedented time. It's a new normal for us, and we're all trying to figure it out, right? And it's different when your partner was go- was was gone for the majority of the day. You only seen him at you know after five, and that was your relationship, so it, it worked. But now you, you're stuck with your partner, and you're stuck with those. We're stuck with different situations that we've never had to deal with before. And now it's forcing people to have to interact. You know, I'm pretty sure people know people who they live together, but they don't interact with each other or nothing. But now you're forced to have to talk to that person. You're like, like we're, we're relearning our, ourselves mm. and, and we're learning ourselves in our new normal. Right. Because there is no date night for real, for real for me and Danny, unless Tatum is sleeping at her grandmothers or, or her aunties, but there is no date night. So now we have to incorporate our date night with our daughter. And how does that look? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there's, I feel like this might be an upswing of both, but dare I say there might be more breakups than babies only because, you know, if I, because if you're already on some type of birth control or whatever, or, you know, I'm thinking too, like, these are, this is, we don't know what's coming next. And the thought of bringing another life into the world could be a scary thought, not because you may not be ready and your partner not, may not be ready, but because you're just like, well, what am I bringing, am I, what am I bringing a child into? So I, I'm going to lean on the side of more breakups than babies. I'm going to agree with that too. I also think that because of, because of the unknown people, People are probably more conscious. Like, listen, I don't want my baby to be born during this or, and if you quarantine, or unknown. If you're really quarantined and social distancing, you probably not fucking like you normally would be. Unless you're like married or something. Like if you like dating, like boyfriend and girlfriend. You don't live with your partner. So from the chat, from the chat, I just want to acknowledge that we got the full is a is a sixty yeah. 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 Yes, I saw that too. Oh. Shout out to our our older participants thank you we support you we love you acknowledge that we got our first audience here today. seasoned exactly um, Lily Yours TV said the Anglo-Saxon is making it through home you know cause you know why because they're too busy worried about what the fuck we doing that's why white people worried about us trying to go for walks and trying to bird watch in Central Park so that's why their shit isn't working out and we're getting some, yeah, people are not here for the quarantine babies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. So, so it's talking about skiing, I know for sure that online dating probably through the roof. Mm. You are online dating. So look, hold on real quick. We have a minute and 40 seconds left. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to end it, go back on, and then you can join right back in. So I see 31 people. I need all of y'all to come back. Don't play with me because there's a lot of people in here whose phone numbers I have. So I will text you. Please don't do that. So we're going to click off and click back on. You have 60 seconds. All right. All right, so listen, right now we're transitioning to go back on live. So that's why you, you had a little quiet voice real quick. We're going to go back on live um, and knock this out. Listen, we truly appreciate the MPHC for even thinking of us and, and taking an opportunity on us. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 it's a great opportunity. I'm having a blast, Danny. I'm having an amazing time. So... Listen, we're going back on. Did you do it right? I think so. Be careful. Whoa. Okay. Go back. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. No, you have to hit here. Go ahead, babe. I got it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I know. So listen, before we come back on, on our live, listen, as you know, our official sponsor is Gaines Sports Gear. G-A-I-N-Z Sports Gear. Dot com. Use our code LOVERS10 and you can get 10% off your first order. Listen, I'm going to say it again because we're going back on live. So I want to make sure that, you know, it's on there. But as always, listen, Gaines Sports Gear. Shout out to my big bro, Chico. And now we're back on. So as I was, as we were coming back on. We did our sponsor. We did our sponsor. So as y'all all know, our sponsor is Gaines Sports Gear. G A I N Z sportsgear.com is the website. Uh, shout out to my my big brother. He's something like a celebrity. He's also something like a doctor. But uh, my big brother, uh, Cornell Conaway, is uh, the owner, founder of Gain Sports Gear. And we have an amazing discount with them 10% off. Uh, for your first order, if you go to Gaines, G A I N Z sportsgear.com. All right, and now we're back. All right, Tia, go ahead. What's the question? People got to see you. I'm your sorry. mom is on here. Shout out to my mom, Deuce. <laughs> Exactly. Mobile mixes, yes. Yep, get your drinks, get your infused drinks, deliveries. Yep. Exactly. First of all, shout out to us for re-upping on this IG Live faster than anybody on Versus who kicked out, got kicked off. So I feel as though we, <clears throat> excuse me, we are doing better than Teddy Riley did the first two times. You're being disrespectful now. Don't, don't disrespect my, my, my fellow Harlem Knight. That's, a Harlem nigga is the reason why he got himself caught up to begin with. Because Harlem niggas do what? Too much. So, anyway. so what, Tia, Who are you married to? I mean. All right. Just, just, I'm just acquiring. We I, all, I just, I just want to know who you married. We all take our L's. Where did you go to school at? We all take Where did you go L's. to school at? Because you knew Queens didn't have it. We, we Shout out to you. Take it's not L's about us. We can. It's not about us. Tia, what was the question again? Thank you. Um, oh, we were going to talk about uh, virtual dating. Yes. Virtually dating and dating and virtually get thoughts on that. Because we know that the right now is trying to connect with folks. Even for... Even so I think I think I think dating right now is probably the most authentic it's going to be. Don't, don't touch my head like that. I think it's the most authentic it's going to be, right? Because you can't see, you can't like be with the person. So you really got to get to know people for who they are. And um, you know, I think this is definitely the time to, to to be able to truly hold people accountable. And you know, you don't really got to care because you're not going to really see them. So. So my little cousin is saying dating is for the birds. It is, so especially is, for you. And so is my, shut up, leave her alone. Exactly. Maybe it's the Taurus in them because they're both Tauruses. Oh, her and me. Oh, 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 Karan said it too. Okay. Oh, you a Taurus to you? Hey. <laughs> so, oh, oh, yeah. I get, I get along with Tauruses phenomenally. So do you? I do. Mind your business. Um. So I'm gonna say like again, clearly. We've been together for forever and a day, so we never had to go. Sorry, you'll be all right. We never had to go through the online dating scene or anything of the sort. But um, 
I mean, I feel as though it's like if you're open to it and you're willing to try, then by all means go for it. Um, and if something clicks off, great. Um, but I think more, it's more kind of maybe more crucial right now is like maybe if you were dating someone or talking to someone um, pre-pandemic and then you had to obviously not see each other. This is a real opportunity to kind of see like, okay, what's working? Can we communicate without having physical intimacy or being in each other or having the social social events aspect to serve as like a distraction or anything like that? So um, there is a potential to get closer because all you literally have is communication. Um, but I can also see why like online dating might be, you know a miss or a dub because it's it's also a lot and people are just going through a lot like this is a collective trauma so you may not even be in the mood to date um or be even be here for it like tj and i are telling you that sorry we're fixing stuff sorry um tj and i are telling you that it's it's not easy and we've been together almost 16 years and there's been moments that we've had so trying to get to know somebody otherwise i didn't get that could you his phone is ignorant um, trying to do otherwise could be really difficult. I see a fellow cancer in there. Hey, whatever. Okay, stop making the iPad. Phone. I'm trying to make sure I'm, you know, interacting with her with these virtual dates. I've. You know what? When you said you got along with wow. I am a cancer. July 16th. Ah, oh, so so sweet. T J is a Pisces. Really, he's a Pisces Aries cusp, but he's a Pisces. I'm a Pisces, bro. Forever, forever. Whoa, in his whoa, 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 hold on. Forever in his feelings. I'm really not mad, but, emotional. But I didn't like what Tia just did with. What are we doing, Tia? I need to know. Listen, you know what it is. T- I know exactly. I'm. I guess I know exactly what Tia is getting at. Thank you. They gotta be at February, Pisces. Whatever. Tia, are there any other questions for us? <laughs> It is. Um, for me, I'm going to say that it's it's tough because um, working from home, the idea of working from home because we have to is kind of like, it's like a double-edged sword because you have that comfortability that you get to work from home. So that's great. But it's also like, I feel like I work harder because I'm home because the expectation is like, you're home, you're not doing anything, so you should be working. So I feel like I'm doing more. But then I also have this this three-year-old who needs mommy and daddy attention. And I think for us, um, again, that's when the communication really comes back, you you know? Like being able to say, well, when do you have your meetings? When do I have my meetings and how we're gonna make it work? Do we need to, you know, ask your mother or your sister to, to help us? Or is it something that we can, manage together, you know? Um, luckily, because everyone's going through it, I think everybody, you know, you may see a kid in the background, the kid may join in, and that is our new normal. And thankfully, no one has been like, hey, yeah. you're still working, right? Because th- again, this is this is our new normal. But it's hard, right? And, and, and even with that, right? Sometimes I'll be on IG and I'll see like my other friends who have kids And they're doing all these activities and stuff. And it's just like, damn, are we not doing enough? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the case. But, you know, uh, reality is when you see things, sometimes we go into our own head and we make our we make our own assumptions. Am I saying that right? Or I think so. Okay. Um, I would agree. Like, it's definitely um, presented its issues. Um. Because somebody in here just said, like, kids are, in, in a kid's mind, it's like, well, you're here, so that means you're available to me. Because up until three months ago, when you're home, for the most part, you are available. You're on, you're on, you're on my time now. And you're 100% right. You're your hardest critic because TJ can attest to the fact that I've had some, like, mom guilt moments where I, like, literally cried because, you know, when this first was happening, um... Tatum was, you know, she was about to be three. 
I was like, is this because she's about to be three or is this because of what's going on or is it a combination of sorts? And I was having these moments of like guilt because I'm like, I'm, I'm her mom. I'm supposed to be able to make it better. I'm supposed to be able to fix things. I'm supposed to be able to relieve her of her stress or whatever is, you know, bothering her to an extent. And what was happening with her being plucked out of daycare, with her not being able to see her little friends, without not seeing her daycare teachers and all of that. I was like, everything's turned on its head, turned upside down. And she's not even old enough to really comprehend. I can't have a really conversation with her. She kind of knows that people wear masks because people are sick. But other than that, she really doesn't understand. And so when she- But that's also, to me, I feel like has been a blessing. It it has been in that we've got to spend a lot of uninterrupted time together. But I also feel, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I have moments of like, you know, am I doing enough for my daughter? And also too, like home is where you basically should have the ability to be loud, to be rambunctious, to kind of let your hair down as a child. So be loud? Oh, only a child? Yeah. I'm just inquiring. Because you, you grow <laughs> out of that as, a, as an adult, except for some people. That's cr- that's crazy. So, point being, though, is that, you know, Tatum Tatum's gotten so accustomed to mommy and daddy being like, hold on one second, mommy's on a work call, daddy's on a work call. Tatum will pretend, and she'll be like, shh, you have to be quiet, I'm on a work call. And then she'll pretend she's teaching, and she goes, hello, this is Brother Byerson speaking, and... It's funny, but it also makes me a little sad because I'm like, she's, you know, is this is becoming a part of her routine where she has to like be quiet, where she really should be able to be her most authentic self here, authentic self here, excuse me. Um, so it, it's been both. It's been both. It's been great because, you know, like this is probably some of the most uninterrupted family time we've had since Tatum's been born, but also... It's been a little bit difficult because we're trying to work and she, trying to take care of her. I know I'm I'm a teacher and I'm like, I'm not supporting my child enough the way that she is because she's so young. She's not in a class, a Google classroom or anything like that, but she's not getting the level of enrichment or engagement that she would get if she was in daycare. So it's it's been both. It's been great, but it's also sometimes been a little bit like disheartening because I'm I struggle personally. I struggle with feeling like I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing right by her, but we do what we can. And, you know, and so back to what I was saying, I was saying that I, I, I appreciate it because she's so young. So that that way we're not having the tough conversation of like, well, you know, what's going on? Like Mm -hmm. it's oblivious to her. Like to her, it's just, I'm just home. Right. Mm -hmm. Mommy and daddy are saying that I have to be home. So I'm home. So, to me, the selfish side of me is like, I like that idea because I would hate for her to be six or seven and like realizing like, sh- I'm not going to see my friends. Yeah. Like to me, it's it, it's great that she's so oblivious to it that we're able to kind of continue. And this is just normal for her because she's not of that age. Like if we had like a 14 year old, you know what I mean? They may hate it because like, I can't see my friends. I can't do anything, but I still got to go to school. I, like... There's so much more responsibility, but for us, it's like she's just growing with the punches because that's all she has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and it, it really and I'm seeing some of the comments as they're going by, and it really does depend on the age of your child too. Yep. Because if your child is like school age and the thick of it, it's hard if you have multiple children. Because right now we only have one, <laughs> and I I support you. I'm there in solidarity. It seems pretty mixed coming from the comments. Some people. Are like, I could work, I could tell them, like, I could do this forever. Mm-hmm. And, and people say, I could tell the work that Without the kids? Yeah. Yeah. yeah hell kids. yeah, because kids are distracting. Like, I taught middle school and I have a three year old, and they're distracting at all ages, one way or the other. And. For me, I don't mind teleworking because I, I used to do it in my old position. But it's different when it's like your telework. It's different when you're teleworking and when and when it's five or five thirty, whatever time you get off, you can just leave, right? I can go to the store, I can go to the bar. But now it's like we're confined home with everything. So like your home is the club, 
it's it's the restaurant, it's the movie theaters, it's everything in between. So it's kind of different because you're stuck in in this new normal. So I feel like that's the the, the major difference. Oh, your chapter is on. Hey, Roll to Orlando. Um, Karan, I miss my kids too. So, um, mo- some of you may know, some of you may not. So, you're I, banning your kids. My, no, I did get. A, I got essentially a promotion, which it took me out of the classroom. I started working for the district, um, Baltimore City Public Schools, at the district level, doing work for children. But I, I do miss my kids. Something terrible. Um, I Facetime them when I can. I text them when I can to check on them, to check on them. Um, when I can, and, um, for those, the ones who have my number and I, I will say this. So like recently, because of my new role, I've had to like observe virtual classrooms and I legit like got emotional when I saw like children, um, like in that classroom setting, because it. Marissa said, take a shot. I got you. I got you, Marissa. Wait a minute now. I got you. No, I'm pulling a pro fight card. No. Um, you ain't and, my pro fight. And so I I literally wanted to cry because I'm like, yo, like, this is not how children are supposed to learn. This is not what fills them because part of what made me the, be- the, the educator I was was that I was big on relationships. Like, my kids, and I'm not trying to toot my horn, like, they, they love me. And... I know that I have friends who are educators. I have line sisters. I have, uh, you know, just sores. Everybody I know that are educators. And so much of what we do is about building those relationships. And we know some of the stuff they're going through at home. And this shit is not easy. And the fact that, you know, when they talk about it, like, they're not as joking when they're saying, like, school is a is a saving grace. School is a safe haven for so many children y'all and it's the place where they get food regularly it's the place where they get love regularly it's the place like i know for a fact that i have to me for me just speaking alone i have been sometimes the most consistent adult in some of my middle schoolers lives because i've had them from sixth through eighth grade and to just have that like the it was the flip of a switch it was the flip of a switch and it's crazy and it's not fair and it's hard for them to process and to understand but that's if, for those of you who have par- who are parents in this group and who have um children who are school age my only charge to you because i do it even with my three-year-old is like grace with a little bit of accountability because nobody knows how they're everybody's coping differently with this situation so we got to show ourselves and very importantly ourselves and we have to show others, including our children, grace because this shit is hard. It's hard, even in the best of home circumstances. Someone in the chat that you mentioned grace before, and that that helping the table. Sorry, Tia, say know. that again, one real quick, because you you a little choppy. Um, someone in the chat said that. You mentioned grace before in an earlier episode. Mm-hmm. It's my grace and accountability is my thing. And, and it helped them. Oh, thank you. That's the best compliment I can get because it's. That's the best compliment you can get. Okay, that shut up. Okay. Because you said Weston was your best but compliment. The best compliment also. I, another great compliment I can get is that I'm a good mother. But grace and accountability is so crucial and. You know, and now my other thing too is managing your expectations. We have to manage our expectations of ourselves, of each other, of as like adults, of our partners, and of our children because this is this is like nothing any of us. I don't care how old we are, how young we are. We've never seen no shit like this before. So we have to manage our expectations and what we would expect from people before this cannot always look the same as what we expect from them now. Because again, if you're even in the best of circumstances the healthiest of relationships you're well adjusted you're going to therapy you got all of this shit going for you you're loved you're fed you're paid it's still a lot Mm -hmm. so you gotta manage your expectations yeah my hat goes out to all the educators everyone who's been doing it and and you know um i think this also shows like the parents like listen your kid don't don't do work, and now and now you're the teacher, and they're still not doing work. We wasn't fucking 
Lying. I got you. I got you, bro. Thank you. I got you, kid. Alright, how's my sound? It's, it's better. better. Thank I don't you. Know why it's chopping up like that? But I don't and I don't know if everyone has the same ability as I do. But I will cut at six o'clock, I have a hard stop. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I stop even before that. Because we have workouts every day at six. And so I'm like, look, y'all gotta you, you want me to do something? Like if never for six, I have a hard stop. And then it's my choice if I go back and like clean something up. After I'm done working out from six to seven, but having that, having, setting aside that workout time at six on the dot has been a saving grace. And mm -hmm. another thing that I've started to do is like I stop working to eat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I don't work and eat breakfast. I don't work and eat lunch. That I because I need to. You need to like make yourself force yourself to have those small down times, or you'll just burn out because. You're at home, so you're comfortable. So you're eating and working and doing all of the things, and you might not even be getting up to go to the bathroom when you want to. You might not be drinking enough water. So. No, you're right. And, you, you're, and you're, right. you're working harder and longer because you're even, because I even had to, if honestly, if my boss, my new boss didn't wasn't like, hey, Danny, I'm actually scheduling our check-in on Thursday because I'm taking Friday off because I need a break. I wouldn't have been like, now that you mentioned, I might need a day off as well. And I took that following Monday off because I'm like, we are, we're like, well, we're home. So how can we take a day off if we're home? But nah, like the, the, the brain drain that is working from home is real. And it's harder to stop when you're home because you're like, well, I'm already home. Mm -hmm. It's not like I have to get here. It's, it's, there's no separation of church and state. So I've, I've had to do hard stops to eat. I've had to do hard stops to be like, I'm going to take my lunch break. Or I'm going to take 30 minutes and I'm going to go outside with my daughter and I'm going to play with her because she deserves my undivided attention as well. I, I see both sides, right? Um, and for, for me, if I'm up and I get an email and it's not going to kill me from, you know, checking it, then I'm going to check it, right? I'm not telling people not to do work. I do think hard, hard stops are important, right? So for like, for me, shout out to my line brother. What's going on, Jamal? Um, for me, Sundays is, is like my hard stop. Like Sundays is the family days, is God day. Like I, I typically don't do anything unless like the house is burning. But any other day, if I'm available, I, I don't mind putting in the work because at the end of the day, I wasn't doing anything anyway. Like I'm not going to be doing something and stopping that to work. But if I'm not doing anything, it, it takes nothing to find, finalize some stuff or just work on some extra stuff. So that way I can free myself up the following week. So, and I, to give a little bit of like context, the TJ situation though, is that TJ's at this point in his career where he's doing some like level up shit, right? So I'm he's going hard in the paint because he's been, as best as I can tell, identified as somebody who's really got the it factor. So he's showing and proving so that way he can level up in his career. So we all know what kind of that, what that feels like where you kind of got to go harder in the paint because it's kind of like, the, I feel like the stars are aligning, but you got to work your ass off for it too. So he is going, doing a lot of above and beyond things, but I also know that it's with a purpose and it's not always his, it's not his MO all the time. Yeah, but, but, but even with that, right? I got the shot, Marissa. I'm going to take it soon. We are definitely going to take it. With with it, you know, sometimes we sometimes we don't go as hard because we're like, we don't have to go as hard or, or, or whatever. But sometimes, sometimes it makes sense just to go hard to knock it out and that way you don't have to worry about it later, right? Sometimes you got to work harder in the beginning so that way you can you can sell at the end. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and sometimes we don't, so sometimes we don't utilize that. Sometimes we're like, well, well, we'll get it later. But had I just spent the extra 30 minutes to knock it out now, I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. Because again, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Something else may come in that's more pressing. So that thing that I put off for 30 minutes that could have been finished yesterday, now it's going to take even longer. So sometimes we got to take that into consideration as well. Um, but Again, I definitely agree that there needs to be hard stops and it needs to be times. And, and that goes to everyone. Everyone's working at home. Like, make sure that you're keeping your family, you know, 
around. Make sure that you're keeping their their feelings, their wants there as well, right? Because it's, it's it's easy to forget. Like my wife is going to support me a hundred percent. If I told her I'm working every day, I can't really be there for you. She's going to support that, but that doesn't mean that she's not going to feel neglected or anything like that. So sometimes we forget about our significant others or our family, our friends and stuff like that. So, you know what I mean? Finding that balance is, is important. And, and again, that hard stop really does matter. Like I said, Sundays are my days. So, I see a couple of people, yeah, I see a couple of people saying that they took days off this week. And when I tell you I stopped today at like 3.30, 4 o'clock and took a nap, that's what I did because that's what I needed. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, It is. And it's... And, oh, go ahead, T. I'm sorry. And I was... I just wanted to say, like, you are your best advocate. And I had... And, you know, managing people during this time is hard. That's mm-hmm. a whole different conversation. But I had to tell someone who was afraid to put in time, you need to put your time in because the job is going to be concerned with the job. Mm-hmm. Say it again. It, it's not that people are forgetting about you, but it's just that you need to go hard for what you want. So you want to be off? Yeah. Nobody has your best interest in mind more than you. And like ultimately the job and the work is going to be there. And you know, it it take it took me a long time with it because from all my educators who are in the group right now, we already know I call out of work, minimum seventy five people are impacted by that. And really quite honestly, speaking for myself, the whole goddamn building was impacted because it is always Bison. Your middle schoolers are running around the building da, 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 because I was like the the, the um, management force in, in, on my team. And so it's really hard to make time for yourself and to be like, you know what? I got to take a break. I got to take a pause. I have to take a step back. But ultimately, it's, you know, it's, it is easier said than done, but you have to make the conscious effort because it honestly, it took me to be like, hospitalized because of my dehydration after I had my weight loss surgery where that was like the first time where I was like man those kids as much as I love them in that building will be there when I get back but I'm like I can't even function and it's really hard because as some of my educators in here are saying like you don't get a day off because people text you and email you and stuff the day and part of why I made this transition and I applied for this job that was ultimately a promotion was not because I didn't love teaching, not because I don't love my kids, even as fucking crazy as middle schoolers can be, but simply because I wanted to be of service to Baltimore City youth in a way that could arguably give me better work-life balance. Because my students and my team and my staff deserve my best, but so do my husband and my child. Yeah. Put your brakes on your calendar, people. Let people know not to mess with you. Carve mm-hmm. your time out. Yeah. Um, okay, so we had another question come through. Um, the question is, should we, is the, are there any plans for a baby, another baby by yourself? I already or seen who we, put that. Or should we just give up all things? How many of y'all want us to have another baby? <laughs> put a little baby emoji or something like that there. Listen, it's it's all on my wife. I'm still trying to get two more. Two. So I feel like that's a good compromise. I wanted four. I'm settling for three. So this is where we're gonna. This is where we're gonna. This is. Excuse me. This is Danny. This is Danny speaking. TJ, you don't even have to be in the frame right now. Oh, I can. I can go. Okay. Up. Yeah, you can leave. Um, we will have another baby eventually. Um, and what I did have to explain to TJ is that it's, I, and I use this frank phrase a lot in my general conversation and you know what I'm about to say? No. And, um, I'm laughing at you. I'm going to answer the question. Um, and I use it on the show a lot, which is bandwidth, right? Um, being a working woman who was a mother in America, being in education, being married to this particular man is a lot. Is a lot. Um, and um, 
I've never wanted just one child and I do want at least one more and I'll see how I feel about two before I do three. But my thing is this is like I don't want to spread myself so thin. I know I would love however many children I have with all of my heart and I would there would be enough love to go around, but I want enough have enough bandwidth as a person that I don't feel stretched so thin. Um that I'm no good to the people that love me most. I'm no good to my children. I'm no good to it, my husband. I'm no good to my family. I'm no good to my mother, my sister, whoever. So, yes, we will have at least one more child. So, this is what I'm going to say. Exactly. Two and a possible. And it's a low possible. It's like a, this is what I'm gonna say. Like a queen. If the next kids that we have are twins, God knew that that was it, right? But if you only have one, then God knows I'm going to get a third. So, either way, we're going to win. Whatever. Or you going to become a stepmother. Hey. I mean, I don't care how, how it happens. I'm sorry, did you say I'll be a stepmother? Yeah, three. Nobody, nobody That's... believes you. Nobody believes you. First of all, I'm the best thing that ever happened to you. Uh, I'm the only person that's going to put up with you. Uh, so, we already know that. Um, Taylor, I'm only having twins. If you have permanent residency in the state of Maryland, do not play with me. Because all these people in here that are trying to be our village, make sure you show up if I happen to pop up with three babies at some point. So, let's just be clear about that. And ultimately, too, the last thing I'll say is this, is that women have children. And that's even because the, that's how God... Even in the best of circumstances, hey, it's listen, a lot. Listen, you see what Tip said. I'm sorry. I'm Look done. at you. Get it together. Oh, well, listen, I'm... Father of the year over here, y'all. That has nothing to do with... So, you're going to equate my, my fathering skills to IG? You yeah, pledge. What, what did what did Tip say? You pledge. You'll be all right. Yeah, and I'm telling you right now, motherhood is the lifelong haze. So I'm pledging still right now. I mean, good day. It, it's a it's a haze for for fathers too. Don't do that. We are ready for the next question. In in, in a respect of people's time, we can maybe yeah. do like two or three more questions. <laughs> Okay. But um, so some teletherapy. Someone mentioned teletherapy in the comments. Yes. That this was a perfect um segue. So we have some insecure watchers. Some what? We have some insecure watchers. Oh yes. Insecure. Yes. Okay. And so this piece of insecure, they are tapping in health. Mm-hmm. Right. Therapy for everyone. Therapy for one, therapy for all is how I is my stance on it. Because even in the best of circumstances, we all have our baggage, we all got our trauma, we all got our fuck shit that we deal with, we all got somebody's toxic ass relative or friendship or relationship that we're dealing with. And ultimately seek therapy for yourself because the way I frame it is we go to our primary care doctor to have a baseline for our annual phys- physical. Ain't shit wrong with us, but we're just going to have a baseline. We go to the dentist twice a year to get our teeth checked just to have a baseline. We go to, for women, we go to the OBGYN to have our um, reproductive organs checked on for a baseline. Because typically there's really nothing, you know, prayerfully, there's really nothing going on with us. But we do that to just make sure everything else is working. Why would we not do that with our minds? Why not? Because well, well, we need a baseline. We have to destigmatize it. So that's the major thing, right? Like if if you go to a therapist, if you go to marriage counseling, if you do any of these things, it's like it's something wrong. And it's not like, oh, they're having problems. They couldn't they couldn't figure out on their own, so they had somebody mediate or someone come in between to kind of give different views and show them different ways to think. We we, we don't have that, right? Society has told us that you're not supposed to do these things. If you go to a shrink or a therapist, you're considered crazy. Like if you take medication to make sure that you're good, you're crazy. Right. Right. The people who have for teachers, right, IEPs, those kids were made fun of. Not like, well, they have something going on and this is what's going to help them to be able to succeed just like everybody else. 
I think we we as people in our generation, the new generations, have to be able to destigmatize it mm-hmm. and make it it's it's normal. Like me and Danny have gone to marriage counseling as mm-hmm. a married couple. We did it prior to getting married. We did it after getting, after getting married. married, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? And I go every. I have a, a standing appointment with my therapist every two weeks. I started going back when my dad passed away for like grief because I was like depressed. Um, and then I really just kept going to kind of like, just keep it up. Um, I know I saw a question and it was like, would you just, does it make sense to just talk to an outside source or does it make sense to talk to a licensed professional? I'm going to lean towards a licensed professional because, um, if, and, and to that point, I'm seeing that person's kind of like retort to people talking in the comments is. There are therapists that meet the needs of whatever you're looking for at every point. So, like, I needed a black woman who has children because I'm a black woman with children. So, I needed somebody who understands what the hell I'm talking about when I'm venting about the things that are going on. Um, And I'm going to say a licensed professional only because not to say that you can't have wildly great advice from people who are um, just, you know, you know, who either know you and your partner or know you and know what you're going through. But that also lends itself to a little bit of bias because whether or not it's implicit or explicit. And that means that somebody might, you know, push you in a direction that you that they want you to go in because they know you. But a licensed professional, it's their legal responsibility to be impartial and to present information to you in a way that you can digest it. But then ultimately, this, the decision is yours. Um, and so that's my personal take on and it. And even finding like uh, someone to speak with, you can do your research. You you can literally try to find someone who fits what you're looking for. And then even once you find them, you can have the conversation to, to just get a vibe. You can have a, a, prelim, a preliminary talk to make sure that the to make sure that that doctor is going to fit what your needs are. But you also have to go into it with with an open mind. Sometimes, again. We are our own worst critics, right? So we may be like, we need to speak to somebody, but I'm going to sab- I'm gonna self-sabotage it because this is a normal or what people may think. And we have to separate that too. Yeah. And there's a lot of us in, in a, you know, and being that the, the everybody in here essentially is black. We already know the stigma that comes along with therapy when it comes to being black and our, and our culture and everything like that. But for most of us, even though I know we have people in here that are over 40, but for most of us who are in this millennial generation, it's up to us to destigmatize it and break the cycles because therapy is just a checkup for your mind. Because ultimately, if tomorrow I lose my shit, my therapist can be like, well, Danny was saying and talking about these things for the last six, seven, eight, nine months. And now she's talking some wild, reckless shit. That shit don't add up. And now you have a baseline to go off of. But we all go through stuff and we all know that we have the people in our lives who that we that we go to to talk to about certain things because we all know that we talk to one friend about when we want to do some dumb shit. We go up to one friend who we know we want them to talk us out of some shit. Is that what you do? That's all friends. Stop it. Um, all my friends know everything. So you talk to because we, we go to people who are going to validate what we're feeling at the time. I don't. When you go to therapy, that means that your feelings will be validated, but you will also be called out on your shit. If it's not adding up. So for anybody who's like trying to figure out the process of finding care, what I did was I went to my insurance website. I checked off woman, you know, black, like I checked off what I wanted and then I just went through and I made a list and I made a call, you know, and I checked the people out. I mean, you know, and everyone will have a free consultation with you. Yes. For you to figure out if they provide what you need, if you gel. Um, when my therapist said feminist, feminist therapy, and she said, well, I understand that the racial implications of feminism in this country. I was like, oh, okay. And then the next thing she said to me um, a couple of weeks ago was radical acceptance. I was like, mm. yeah. Be like, chose, chosen. Right. You'd be like, that's your pick. See, so my therapy, so my therapist, and I'm going to tell you why I love her, right? Because she, because, I also see how she's like not wrapped too tight, but she knows her shit, right? And that I love her because it is technically like a little bit like faith-based, the the organization that my insurance kind of found her through. 
but she she knows how to tailor it to the audience right so she's like i know if i'm talking to somebody who's uber spiritual then i'm going to meet them where they are she knows that i am religious i am christian but i'm also secular whatever you want to call it a little bit of a heathen too um, a lot of bit of heathen but whatever you know you. i know I, I right? i'm an a la carte catholic that's what i like to call it so we will have a session where she will say danny your ministry is your home you need to make sure that your home is straight before anything else is that right giving me a little bit of that bible vibe right but she's also going to talk about sucking dick in the con- in, in the same session. I ain't so, never had this conversation. Hold so, on. So, go ahead. What I'm saying though is that she's meeting me in the when she's talking about intimacy or whatever, and she's talking to me in both both ways because just like she, I have the duality in me, so she's talking to me in that duality with that duality. So. Um, I'm paying for the next session if that's what y'all talking about. Mind your business. <laughs> Between me and my therapist and God. Got you. Okay. But, huh? A couple things I want to make sure that I mentioned. Anyone who is thinking about therapy, now is a good time to drop out in teletherapy. In an insurance company case, most insurance companies are co free right now. Free, um, $5, $10, $15. Not, not a reasonable price per session. Check it out. Look into your insurance. You pay you have, for it anyway. If you have FSA, you can utilize that with it. EAP, Employee Assistance Program. That's usually, they will refer you to that. That's a start. Do what you must. Uh, mm-hmm. That's March. They like March 3rd and cover all the co-pays. And, they're, and they just extended it to June. So now is a really good time to find a therapist. And if one doesn't work, you have to find one. Yeah. So just to re- just to reiterate what Tia said, because they said you were going out just a little bit, she was saying basically this is an amazing time to look for a therapist because they're because of everything going on. Insurance companies are like waiving copays and things of the sort, and you can use this as an opportunity to do teletherapy. So you can just get on Facetime, get on Zoom, get a feel for the person, um, and then you know make that decision about what works best for you, and then go from there. So if you get nothing else from this episode of Lovers Quarrel. Go to therapy. Um, Tia, let's take one more question so we can kind of wrap up the show. We have like... Okay, cool. So we actually did get another question in the chat. Go ahead. It says, do you feel like we are living up to our purpose as black group letter organizations to our community at large? I'm going to say as a whole, yes. I'm going to say no. That's why... Red Lover Squirrel. Why? Let's talk about it. I'm going to say no because I feel like back in the days they did a lot more. Um, they, Danny's going to the bathroom. <laughs> um, I feel like back in the days they, they did a lot more. Um, a lot of our organizations were founded during the times and as, as, as a way to protect us, to give us a voice, to give us protection. And, and we did a lot more for the community and it was more about um each other right like at that at, during those times with different organizations but they all shared one thing in common which we all still share we were all black we were all african american for the most part i mean we have members who are not african american but we share that commonality and now we don't have that as much but i also feel like people aren't there i'm feeling like our our elders worked harder than we did, right? I mean, again, it was different times, right? They didn't have social media. They couldn't just post a flyer online and hope that they're going to get the likes or get the juice. They actually had to post flyers around the schools in, in different areas. They had to go to other schools to promote their events. They they just did more work, right? They, they, they worked harder. And I feel like for us, we are, we're kind of spoiled, like, we live off of what our ancestors did and not what we do. So that's that, that's my take on it. But you feel like we are still living. So um, I think that black week letter organizations always have room for improvement across the board. But ultimately, I still think that our core values and message are being 
um, reinforced by the work that people are doing um, and the efforts and that the fact that like, I think if you come across most people who are great, that their heart is in the right place, that they're doing what they can with what they have, that they're trying their best. And, you know, there's always room for improvement, but it doesn't mean that we are, we have fallen off. People are going to have their opinions. They're going to have their um, perceptions. But the people I know, the, the Greeks I know, we are doing what we can with what we have we are being we are supporting each other and we are being supported as best we can and i think that that's all you can really ask for sometimes i also think it's different because we have different lens right i'm i'm talking from the fraternity lens you're talking from sorority and i i feel like even that i feel like the sororities most of y'all stay active longer most of y'all are doing the work and 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 y'all y'all truly live to what y'all done. I feel like the fraternities, and again, this is my personal opinion. I feel like we aren't living up to it. Like we may, you know, get the opportunity in college, and we do it in college, and then we graduate, and now we can't we can't pay our dues, or we can't stay active, or we're finding all these excuses. But when we were wanting to be members, there was nothing that we wouldn't have done to 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 be able to become members, right? And I feel like we've, we've lost that drive, right? We had a drive to become members. And then once we became members, it was kind of like a slap in the face to them. Like, well, I'm already a member, so it doesn't matter. And no, it, it doesn't stop there. And I think that's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. We could agree to disagree. Yeah. So, so one of the reasons why, well, the main reason why I became active with um, the panel and the council is because I saw us doing the work as individual organizations, chapters, but how much more powerful could we be together? Mm-hmm. It's that whole open hand, closed fist, right? And so that's kind of what I hope, like, just these casual coming together uh, events that we're doing now helps to bring us together. So then when it's time to do the, the big work, like, we're already connected. No, definitely. We know, what's, we know what's going on with each other. So I encourage anyone who has suggestions for the pain how we can create a, a, a greater collective presence in Baltimore to like hit us up, hit me up. Definitely. I definitely think that's important. And I think it's important. I mean, again, COVID has showed us that we can, if we work together, we're so much stronger, right? The things that we're doing with what we have right now is like amazing. Like all the Zooms that we're doing, the verses, just, just the creativeness that that we're doing. Honestly, where people are probably meeting more now because of because of COVID, right? I've had I've seen people th- throw parties, they they threw baby showers. Like this is real like we're we're really utilizing the information and, and, and the time to be able to interact with people in a way that we've never even thought about it, right? Because if we just said four week well, six weeks ago, we're gonna have a Zoom party, people to laugh. But now that's that's a thing, right? So I think that we have to utilize that more and, and, and just treat people the way that you want to be treated. Like again, we could be a part of different organizations but still have the same common goal. And listen, frats, like I joke with people, like Tip is a Sigma. That's my guy. You know what I mean? And we'll we'll have jokes and banter, but it's never gonna be disrespect that he's a Sigma and I'm an alpha. Never. Davin is an iota. I'm never going to disrespect him as a person just because he's an iota, right? And I think that's another thing that we have to kind of change. Like, we can... It's a difference between, like, having, you know, the little jokes about the Greekdom, but still respecting the fact that, listen, we chose different paths, but we all have a common goal. We're doing the same... We're doing, we're we're doing the, the same, same work. We're in it for the same reason. Yeah. Period. And I think that's the, the major thing that needs to come out we're here to do the work that our ancestors our, our founders and everyone else laid laid down for us and that's something that as as greeks we should always look at what i'm doing now is this something that my founders will be proud of and that may make you think about things differently and do things differently because again what we were founded on and and, and what they had to go through versus what we're going through now it was so much tougher, but they were able to prevail. And 
I don't think that we're living up to that personally. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I think that this would be a great time to kind of put a bow on things, as we like to say. Um, Folks, y'all, this was so much fun. It was. Um, It definitely was. um, Tia, thank you so much for for even thinking about us. This was a phenomenal idea. If you if you like this, um, just put another little like boxing glove, a heart, or anything like that. Uh, Stephen, well, you were late. So that's why that's because I, Steven was working on like million dollar exactly. websites and you know jackets just got here. jackets with buttons and stuff like that. So. so if you like this, you know, let us know. Um we will try to incorporate this more into our thing. Um if I'm being fully transparent, um TJ and I might be taking the tiniest bit of a hiatus. Possibly. Possibly. Yes. We're we have some things to tie up as far as loose ends when it comes to like our old house and um, just kind of getting acclimated and we want to make sure that we're giving you guys quality content versus just like filling a, a void every Friday um, and we, we, we think we want to entertain doing some restructuring as far as how how and when we roll out ep- new episodes of the podcast. Um this episode, this episode will drop on Friday, uh, as always, um, and we will make an announcement one way or the other um, once we have an opportunity to really sit down and kind of hash that out. But I just want to put that on your radar. Um, not that we're done for good or anything like that. Just that sometimes we just kind of need uh, self-care, right? And a little bit of um, time to really have a better attack on how we want to engage with our, our listeners. But this is has been awesome this has been amazing it's been great to been to have been able to talk to you guys um in real time and get the feedback tia thank you again y'all make sure y'all follow the metro baltimore mphc page to see what they're doing whether or not you're greek or not it doesn't matter if you're trying to if you're in the baltimore metropolitan area and you're trying to do the work that will uplift all the community and the community check it out um but yeah, this has been awesome. Um, Tia, do you have anything else you want to add before we do our sign off? So, Madam President of the MP, MB, MPHC, wanted me to shout out um, that all of the presidents of the DNAT organizations are behind the Poor People's Campaign, the Poor People's March. It's a virtual march happening on June 20th. And then also, every week we shout out Black Restaurants. Because yep. we need to make sure that our businesses survive this. Since we started this initiative in March, there have already been restaurants on our list that have closed. Mm. And so it's really important that we put our collective dollars behind that. So this week is Dakari Soul Food in South Baltimore, Fishnet in, at, Mount, at Mount Vernon Marketplace, and Peppa Flame over in Southeast Baltimore. They all deliver or offer curbside. And what we'll also do is we'll put it in the show notes. So T is going to send us the restaurants and their information. And we'll also add that in the show notes so that way you guys can get it. Um, also, they do a workout. MPHC does a workout. Is it Monday, Wednesdays, and Sundays? It's Monday through Thursday and then Sundays. So Monday through Thursday and, and then on Sundays. I'll also make sure that that's on the, the show notes as well. Because mm-hmm. again, listen, we're home. So... Health is wealth. Yes. Danny was working out yesterday. Yes. Struggling in the living room. See, but I, I wasn't going to say all that. I was just going to just say that she was working out. You know what I mean? That's fine. We well, do. y'all saw me after my workout. Yes. <laughs> we surely we, did. Yes. And we're glad you made it. Oh, my goodness. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for listening to this live recording of an episode of Lover's Quarrel. Thank you for joining us on this Instagram live. Um, Tatum is not here. I was going to say we have a special guest, but... Here is London. She's crept in the room. So this is our firstborn. <laughs> so um, Megan, don't say anything smart about my dog. She's definitely going to say something um, smart. Let rat. But uh. anyway, we just want to thank y'all again for joining us. Before we close out, come on, let's take this other shot. So to TJ's ambition and to my promotion and to all of you. So here we go. I'm about to be hungover tomorrow. Jesus Christ. That's disgusting. 
So bad. To kill you. So bad, y'all. Okay. Um, as always, I am your girl. T- oh, see, look, I can't. You about to say Tatum? I was gonna say TJ. I'm your girl, Danny. And I'm your guy, TJ. And you know that Wait we. Up. See, we we didn't even like do it right. You supposed to where they can follow us at. Yes, sorry. Like, well, clearly follow. you found us on Instagram Live. We are God on Lee. Instagram at Lovers Quarrel Show. Stop being a rookie. We are on Twitter at Lovers Quarrel Seven. Uh huh. All any questions, comments, concerns that you want to follow up with us for another episode, email us at Lovers Quarrel Show at Gmail Listen, and if you get a chance. On your iPhones, even if you don't have an iPhone, I believe you have the podcast app that you can still locate for Apple. Please uh, look at Lovers Quarrel, subscribe, leave comments. I'll take a one star a to a five star. I mean, we want a five star, but listen, be honest. If, if, if you think we're trash, tell us so that way, we, that way we can get better. But please tell you, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Exactly. All so, right, now go ahead. You can go back. You like what you heard. So as always, I'm your girl, Danny, whose chest is on fire. And I'm your guy, TJ, and never you, a lightweight. And you know that we fuss. We fight. But, but we, we love. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Have Appreciate a good night. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.